What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. It is 5.30 in the morning over here in Virginia Beach, and we're about to jump into the penitentiary. That's right. Every day's a good day to talk about prison over here on Lockdown 23 and 1, and do I have some crazy-ass stories for y'all today. First story's coming from Arizona, ladies and gentlemen. Arizona, and of course, it's about the Aryan Brotherhood, and you know... Some of the most gruesome stories I've been reading recently, and I don't know if it's just all connected or not, but there has been a lot of killings pertaining to this group in prison. And uh, actually, it ain't recent. Sometimes it takes years for people to go through the court process for a murder in prison. And uh, this guy's looking like he's going to get the death penalty for what he did. So let's go ahead and get into the details of this story coming from Arizona. And keep in mind, I have about three other stories after this. They're just, it's unbelievable. It was shocking. The Arizona Supreme Court on Tuesday upheld a state prison inmate's conviction in the killing in which another inmate was stabbed 114 damn times. 114 times this man was stabbed. You ain't gonna believe why he was stabbed. Thomas Michael Riley was sentenced to death for a murder conviction and a killing with accomplices. With accomplices. That means someone was probably there stabbing with him or they just found out somehow through intel who was connected to calling this shot. It says jurors found multiple aggravated factors in Riley's case, including that he committed the offense while in custody. According to court papers, Riley wrote another inmate a letter, probably like a scroll or a kite, and it got uh, it got caught up by the COs or something. It wrote, he wrote a graphic letter describing the killing of Kelly and detailing Riley's quest to become a full member of the Aryan Brotherhood prison gang. Let me just say this. A lot of people that have been slaying these fools have been trying to become a member of AB. Is that what it takes? You got to take someone's life? I mean, Jesus, if you want it that bad, man, damn. Go ahead and have it. Them dudes ain't playing out there with the whole brand, man. You know, you come over here, you see people joining AB and stuff, man. It, they ain't putting in no real work, maybe in some places, but it's rare, you know? Uh, definitely over there in the West Coast, man, the AB is strong, for sure. It says, according to trial evidence, the gang targeted Kelly because he refused to commit an act of violence against another inmate. Kelly, the one who got stabbed a hundred and what, 14 times, I believe? Uh, he got stabbed because he didn't want to put in work on someone else. So Kelly might have wanted to be an AB, and then they said, hey, you got to put in some work. He said, no. They might have turned on him, or he was already a part of the group. Okay, he could have already been a part of the group and said, nah, man, I'm not doing that. I'm about to go home. I'm about to go home. Why am I going to go over there and put in work on this dude? I'm right at the door. So obviously, they got some guys that go in there and handle business on Kelly, which is pretty damn wild, man, because... But it's not, because I don't know the whole story. You know, a lot of people can look at these stories and say, man, he just didn't want to do it. But look, if you signed up for this shit, you got to be ready to do this type of stuff. I mean, this is a prison gang, you know? This ain't no membership at Walmart or something. You can't just go buy something when you want to, okay? If you, they tell you you got to do something, you got to do it. If you don't, there's going to be consequences. I'm not saying that that's how it happened with Kelly, but I mean, they ain't just going to go out there and start stabbing people up for no reason. They put out the order for Kelly to go hurt someone, and he didn't. And from what I hear, you know, usually it's uh, prospects or people that are part of the group already that are putting in this work. So chances are that's what Kelly was doing, either one of the two. You know, I, I seriously doubt he was just some random. But, you know, uh, the crazier thing is I've had people say they checked in. I've had people come on to my uh, Instagram. They don't want to come on the show, but they tell me about their story, right? And I've had probably at least three or four of these same type of stories where these guys would tell me that they locked it up in certain prisons because the brand or another organization wanted them to put put in some serious work on someone and they didn't want to because they're about to go out the door so they checked into pc and i've also had people say that there are prospects and they're just being used the whole time by a certain organization because they knew that they would do anything to become that member you know and 
It's sad to say, but in every group, every organization, I don't care where it is, in prison, on the streets, someone in that group is going to use you to their advantage. Somewhere down the line. That's why I try to stay the hell away from people, period. But in prison, it's tricky, man. You know, and you can read these articles all day long, but it doesn't really give you the heart of what's going on. I'm sure there's a lot more drama behind the scenes when it came to this Kelly guy. You know, but 114 times, ladies and gentlemen. That's a lot of damn times, man. Scary to think. Imagine being the coroner picking up that thing. They're probably like, damn, homeboy got worked. The next story is another stabbing. Another stabbing. Man convicted of stabbing TPD canine dog Blitz. <laughs> Sentenced to 18 years in prison. He didn't even kill the dog, but he got sentenced to 18 years in prison. I stabbed a human being and only got two and a half. It's because I was innocent, man. They got me for nothing. This dude, man, shit, it doesn't matter, man. You put two and two into perspective. Look, this is the thing about canines, too. I tell people all the time, they say, hey, you're, they're letting the canines loose. Bro, you better come out of your hiding spot. <laughs> you better come out, because if they're that close to you and they're saying, hey, uh, we're gonna let the canines out. It's because they know you're there. The canine's gonna find you. Unless you're like in a cage, in an attic, and you know that thing ain't gonna get you, then come the hell out of your hiding spot because them canines will destroy you. Cops, man. I was watching cops the other day and they let, let this uh, canine go, right? The canine was mauling this guy well after he gave up. You know, they, they shouldn't even sent the dogs in on him because he gave up for real. But this thing was locked on to the dude's leg for probably five minutes. The cops couldn't get the dog off of his leg. He was mauling it up. I mean, it was treacherous. That was damn treacherous, man. And these canines, sometimes they don't listen to the, uh, the police officer's request to unlock. And sometimes, man, it's been known that police officers will act like they're trying to get the dog off. But they're not really giving them the sign to get off of them. You know what I mean? I'm telling you, man. You know, canines is tricky. I, I can't stand them canines, man, for real, because I've had canines sit down and alert to drugs in my vehicle before, and I ain't never had shit in it. I mean, it was a rental. I was traveling with my family, and they brought the canines around, you know? So, them little freaking punks will sit down on anything. You whistle one weird way, they're going to sit down and alert to some drugs. I don't trust them canines, man. But 18 years in prison for probably just trying to get the damn dog off of him, you know? This should be something that everyone is aware of, okay? Since everything that has happened around here, there's been a lot of news briefings coming straight from the White House, okay? And, uh, you know, they have these live streams coming from all these, uh, you know, updates uh, where you can hear the president talk and all that good stuff, and you can leave. Uh, community comment and a lot of people may be watching these comments because believe it or not there's like 60,000 people watching these streams I mean the daily updates from the White House is very popular in the social media realm and I watch them all the time and every now and then I put lockdown 23 and 1 in there and see how many of my homeboys are in the chat with me why do you see a few but lockdown 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 what's up dog what's up you know I'm like what's up man what's up you know, I mean, I'm in the White House chat party, you know, but this guy right here, Texas man gets 18 months in federal prison for threatening to harm the prezo, the Presidente. 36-year-old man pleaded guilty and faced up to five years in prison. Instead, he received a reduced sentence and will serve three years of supervised release after prison. <clears throat> I'm not going to read the threats that he said, but they're pretty, pretty strong. You know, so you never know who's watching in that live stream, ladies and gentlemen. If you leave a comment, something sideways, especially on a live stream like that, you never know who's watching. The federalities could be drinking their morning coffee, reading everything, and then they see that, they're like, oh, let me just check this guy out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, slap some convictions on him right there. Got your IP address faster than white on rice. Or whatever kind of shit they get to locate you. Now this guy's going to the federal penitentiary for just being reckless in a live chat. Next on the list is coming out of North Carolina. A woman gets three years in prison 
for posing as an FBI agent on a dating website. What the hell was this girl thinking, man? You know, at the same time, let me let me let me come to her rescue for a moment. Okay, she's po why is she posing as a federal agent on a dating website? Obviously, she's tired of fools lying to her ass on this dating website. That like, man, if I pose as a federale, they know I can do background checks. They know I can find everything, so they're not gonna lie to me. That's probably what the hell she's thinking, man. You know what I mean? And uh, she probably had a falling out with someone, right? She was probably dating someone uh, off this website, and and he might have seen her uh, online, but not replying to his messages or something, you know. So he's like, man, screw her. She she left me to the curb. I'm a reporter ass. She ain't no real federal rally. He probably called the feds as soon as he didn't get a little kick it from her and said, hey, this girl is an imposter. I don't know how this type of shit happens, but it definitely did. Monroe, North Carolina, a woman was sentenced to three years in prison for posing as an FBI agent on a dating website and illegally having a gun. Brownlee reportedly falsely told someone she met on a date that she was an FBI agent conducting a counter drug operation. <laughs> she got into depth with that shit. After Brownlee was arrested later the same day, she falsely told the same person that she had to keep her identity secret from law enforcement because she was operating undercover. But we're on a dating website. <laughs> No better way for me to become undercover than making my dating website profile public. Court records show that in addition to the fake FBI badge, law enforcement recovered a stolen loaded gun from the stolen vehicle Brownlee was driving. This girl's a damn gangster, man. She had a stolen car and a stolen gun and some fake ass stolen whatever FBI car. This girl's treacherous, man. Even guys out there, you know. Girls say it all the time. Oh, you gotta make sure that he's who he is. Well, shit. You know, it ain't it ain't like in the, back in the day. You know, the girls' side things on the dating sites, you know, guys are weirdos. You know, girls, they're just trying to make sure that they're not picking up some kind of... Now it's 2020 now, though. It's 2020. Guys gotta make sure they ain't hitting on something like this. You know, go on a date. With a fake FBI agent with a stolen gun, stolen car, might have stolen movie tickets for the date. You don't know what to expect nowadays, man. It's 2020. 20 damn 20, man. This is like one of the craziest years I've ever seen in my life. Now, last but not least, and this kind of worries me because I was actually planning on doing this uh, to a few locations. But it probably changed my whole perspective on doing it now, alright? Deputies looking for Trio who broke into a former prison building. Crazy, ain't it? Mason County, Michigan. The Mason County Sheriff's Office is asking the public for help identifying three male subjects who they said broke into Camp Sobel Prison. Hopefully I pronounced that prison correctly. The building is no longer an operational prison. Now my question here is, if this is a non-operational prison, why is this surveillance footage better than any active prison I've ever seen in my life? <laughs> Every act of prison, the security cameras is like 420p. I mean, these shits is like 1080. I mean, you're seeing you're seeing stuff in in other dimensions with these days. This is like a ghost adventure damn camera, man. You're seeing thermal and everything. This is the predator looking down at them, man. What the hell? They got the best surveillance in this damn broke down inactive penitentiary. It's probably you know that prison's probably used for something else though, even though it doesn't say. In the article, it's probably used for something. I know in Michigan, there's a lot of, and in Illinois as well, there's a lot of abandoned prisons they turn into like Halloween stuff or they just use them for other things. Uh, but they're, you know, you got to be careful, man. All these abandoned prisons, you might think, oh, they're abandoned. No, nothing's going on over here. You know, you're thinking in a, in a child childlike mindset, okay? I'm a, I'm, just, I'm not doing nothing really bad. Yeah, I might be trespassing, but I'm over here, you know, just checking out something that's abandoned. Well, guess what? You're an adult now, and you might have a felony on your record. And then chances are you go into these places, you're probably going to get a break and entering. You know, and of course, if you got felonies already on your record and that petty ass break and entering, even though you weren't really breaking and entering, you just crawled underneath a broken, already broken fence just to check out an old prison. Now you're sitting in the courtroom facing, what, five to ten for illegal breaking and entering? 
you know, and you're a convicted felon already, you know how terrifying that must be to go in front of a judge and say, man, I was just trying to, you know, make a YouTube video or something. You know, you got to be careful, ladies and gentlemen. I bring these stories your way because a lot of people might think that shit like this, it just very rarely happens. Well, look, a lot of people break into abandoned places on a regular basis, man, whether it's to hunt ghosts or just do whatever. You got to be careful. You never know when there's going to be surveillance cameras around, even if it's abandoned. And you never know how viciously these guys will come at you with paperwork in the courtroom. You got to realize these owners of these facilities, if they are still doing something in these facilities, maybe not the whole compound, but maybe one building is running out of the whole compound. They're used to people breaking into these places and graffiti in them and, you know, just destroying these buildings in general. And they get tired of it. So when they do catch someone, they're going to prosecute your ass to the max because of everyone else beforehand that destroyed the facility. See what I'm saying? Even if you weren't even doing shit, you were just checking it out, recording, honest, you know, honest little uh, uh, walkthrough of an abandoned prison. Well, if you're caught, you're probably going to reap all the consequences from everyone that has vandalized that damn prison in the past. <laughs> or the guy that's running the place probably just had a bad day with his old lady or something. Said, man, hell yeah, convict that fool every conviction you could possibly get. Every time I got a bad decision in, in these board hearings in prison uh, and I got really mad, I would tell them all the time, damn, man, looks you must have caught your old lady with someone else last night, huh, man? Oiling me up like that. And that's the truth. That's how I felt, man. I was like, man, in order for these guys to give me this amount of time in the hole for something so petty, they had to have woken up on the bad side of the bed. Wrong side of the bed. I said bad side. The wrong side. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, those are some wild stories coming your way today. I hope you enjoyed. I will try to get more interviews coming as soon as possible, man. I've been procrastinating big time. So many video games is out right now, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all know I'm a damn gaming nerd. If who the hell buys Alita t-shirts? I do, because I am a big-ass nerd. I am, believe it or not. I'm a cool, cool-ass nerd. Y'all don't even know about all the barriers, ethers, and fire, wind, and ice spells I be casting every single day in Final Fantasy hundreds. For those of y'all that do follow that game, I am on chapter 13. I'm about to wrap the game up. 15 chapters in the game. And then it's on to the harder side quests. And people don't understand what the hell I'm saying. But believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, I've had a lot of stuff going on. So it has been delaying a lot of good content coming your way, but I promise it is on its way. All right, so if you enjoy all this kind of content about prison, jail, lockup, or just crazy stories from within it, do not forget to hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell before you leave. Check out all your Lockdown 23 and 1 merchandise on Teespring, my handcrafted artwork on Etsy, and my Patreon for any kind of promotions. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I salute to every last one of you who been supporting me since the beginning and everybody who's just now joining the Lockdown Compound. Y'all be easy, be safe, and stay free.